Hi everybody, welcome back to the Sew Making It Up channel. I'm Jane and today I'm talking about my recent makes and I've got a little bit of some new fabric to show as well. So as I mentioned in my last video and I'll put a link somewhere around here, I was going to make the Itch to Stitch Busan top. So I've got it on. Let me just stand up so you can see this. Now this is the um, <laughs> the red cotton jersey from Lady McElroy from Sherwood's fabric that I showed in my last fabric haul. And this top's got some nice details. You can see it's kind of semi-fitted. I've got a t-shirt on, on underneath as well, so it's looking a little bit a little bit more snug than it normally would. You can see it's got the nice long arms and they're quite fitted around here so my arms are uh, you know they're sort of thinnish and it's it's okay so it's not that tight that it feels uncomfortable but if you don't like to feel restricted constricted either or then you might want to add a little bit more seam allowance on here because they are quite fitted and then around the shoulder you can see there are three pleats which I wasn't sure actually whether it was going to look a little bit too bouffanty but in this fabric which is it's sort of a medium weight cotton cotton lycra it's fine it just gives enough detail for it to look a little bit unusual but it's not so padded that it's going to put you off wearing it and then it's just got a normal flat collar band which and, and the pattern again really easy to follow went together really well and I would say it's you know pretty much true to size as well so that is and you can see I've written on the top that it's a centimetre seam allowance so these were the patterns where I was saying before the seam allowance is slightly different depending on what you're making and you do kind of need to look for it in the sewing instructions to make sure you're not using the standard one and a half centimetre seam allowance so that is that one so I think I will make it again I think this would be good for um, colour blocking as well you can get some nice detail going on with with contrasting arm pieces and a new collar band I think that would look quite good so that's that one okay the next one complete disclaimer I have stolen this idea from Rachel at Stitched Up and I'll put a link to her channel below when I watched one of her recent videos she had made a colour blocked t-shirt and I quite liked the idea of that because I don't know about you at the minute I'm all about sort of the cotton jerseys or the sweatshirting and really sort of comfortable fabrics and you end up with sort of the quarter or the half metre amounts afterwards and I, I never know what to do with them so what I have done in the past is to make, make some dog chew toys from the strips of fabric and if anyone's interested in knowing how you do that I will do a demo it's really really easy but it's good for using up your scraps so this one is hopefully you can see it do you know what I'll take it out of the packet so you don't get the reflection up there you go Hopefully you can see that. So this is from Sinclair Patterns, which I'd, I've not heard of before and hadn't used. And this is the Calypso top. Now you can see there, there are four versions of this, which I thought was quite good. So this was $9.99. And there you get the t-shirt, you get the long sleeved version, and it's got a nice sort of drawstring detail at the bottom. I will put in another picture of this so you can see the detail as I'm talking through it then it's got a cow neck and then it's got a hoodie version and the cow neck and the hoodie versions also have got pockets on here but they're not the normal sort of patch pocket they, they're sort of integrated into the design of the top and I thought that was quite a nice idea so it's quite good to get that many variations I think it worked out about seven or eight pounds so not bad at all Again, sizing pretty much spot on and obviously instructions are really good. This even comes with a, a little colour sheet so you can, you can sort of play with the different colours before you make it up. Now, I have made, in true Jane style, three of these. One of which you can see behind me here. And this is using the remnants of this uh, cotton jersey. And you'll see as well, it's got a strip of the Lady McElroy Cobra Corsage, can't talk, jersey crepe. 
and then the the middle section was that silver cotton jersey that I didn't really know what to do with and I wasn't that sure about the colour so I think that this has turned out quite well the back of this has actually got a different colour red on it it's slightly brighter but really good for using up your scraps I think you know that that last sort of quarter half half set half meter of fabric that you really don't know what to do with and normally if you buy cotton jersey or sweatshirting it's quite wide so you can get quite a lot out of it so that's that one and then this one go is the sort of blue version so this is made of the ponty roma spotty ponty roma that i got as a remnant from sew over it and some navy and royal blue jersey that i had again as leftovers i'm not sure if this one works as well let me know I had a little bit of a, I don't know, in my, in my head, they all look great. And then when I'd sort of made them, I, um, I'm still a little bit not sure. Rachel's stitched up version is really lovely and it looks great on her. And I don't know if I'm just not doing enough contrasting colours to make it work. I had made another one because I said I'd made three. I cut it out and thought, I'm really not sure. I sewed it up and I thought, I'm really not sure. I spilled a drink on it. I thought, I'm really not sure. I put it on and I thought, mm, yeah, no, it's just not happening. So I'm ashamed to say that went in the bin. I didn't even finish it off. It's, it's just one of those things. I think at the minute I'm having a little bit of a struggle to make things that really are firing me up to wear because uh, we're not going anywhere, obviously. And I, I don't really want to wear or make structured, structured things. So I am having a little bit of a sort of a jersey sweatshirting moment at the minute and just really making things that are, I guess, a bit more practical. Anyway, I like the idea of this. I think I might make another one. I think I do need to perfect it a little bit more. So that is that one. And then the last thing I've made this week is something else I mentioned on my other video. I said with this fabric, which was the kind of the bluey gray viscose jersey. Again, I think I got this from Sherwood's fabrics. It will say in my, in my last video. So from this one, again, this was a remnant piece. But I think it was just over a meter. I wanted to make some pajamas. So I love the viscose jersey because it's it's so soft, it's very floaty, but I find if I make normal clothes, i.e. not pajamas, it's a bit clingy for me. Um, and it's beca because it's quite lightweight, it, it stretches a lot more than, than normal cotton jersey. So I tend to make pajamas from it. I I've, I've made my son quite a few pajama tops from fabric like this and it's really nice to wear so I thought I would make myself some pajamas from it and I have just basically used, can't really see can you, but they're just pajama bottoms and this was using the Pine Cove pajama bottom pattern and, and that's just ba your basic pajama bottom patterns. It's, there's no pockets or anything like that. It's just turnover at the waist, straight up and down. So I used that and then my, what I wanted to do was not have an elasticated waist because I find with pajamas that can be a bit hit or miss and they can ride up or they can be a bit too loose. So I thought what I'd do is use some cuffing. You can see that if I move it out of my face you'll be able to see it and I the plan was to have this without any elastic in it and and just have a wider waistband and it would be really comfortable because it would gather everything in but it'd be comfortable that it's it's not too tight around your tummy that that didn't work so some of you would probably think well yeah of course that's not gonna work so because this this, this was quite wide I measured this and, and stretched it out, etc. And then I've just overlocked it on. But it's not strong enough to, to gather everything with the weight of the pyjama bottoms, because obviously there's still quite a lot of fabric here. It's not strong enough to gather that in and still fit nicely. Basically, they just fall down. What wasn't gonna happen, was it? So I have ended up putting elastic in here, 
which is why at the back it doesn't look that great. But apart from that, they, they're just, you know, hemmed at the bottom, straight up and down, baggy pyjama bottoms. Now, the other plan was to make the cami top with the same fabric as, as a you know matching pyjama set. Once I had cut these out, there just basically wasn't enough. I was left with a, a strip again. So I sat and thought about it and I thought, well, I kind of want the top and the bottoms to match. So what I ended up doing, and it is a bit creased because I have tried them on, was this. So I had uh, a band of this left anyway, which I, I'd had in my stash for ages and hadn't used up. So I did the top portion in the matching fabric and then the bottom in the matching grey ribbing, which means it, it does look like a pyjama set. I couldn't get the... Well, I could have probably bought it, but I had loads of this anyway, so I decided not to. The the elastic doesn't actually match, but I kind of top stitched it in a matching thread. You can't see that, but it is. So there you go. And actually, I have to say, so comfortable. So, so comfortable to wear. Again, because this is more of a lightweight viscose jersey, whereas the other cami tops I'd made are quite tight fitting and they're supposed to be this is this comes up quite baggy because it it has more stretch and as i said before it's more it's more lightweight so it it's sort of hangs more but for pajamas it's ideal because you don't want it be you don't want it to be too tight so i'm actually really pleased with those so that I, i'm going to put that down as a success because i wasn't sure what else i was going to do with this fabric i used up the cotton jersey band I haven't finished this at the bottom because it's not going to fray and you don't need to and yeah nice and comfortable I would wear them all day if I could but I probably shouldn't right so I've also got a couple of fabrics now again the first one copying Rachel from Stitched Up because she mentioned discovery knitting I think her friend had been trying to find some Brereton striped jersey and they'd gone on to this site discovery knitting where they've they basically sell stretch knitwear type fabric so i went to have a look now i'm a bit on the fence with this one now i know rachel did say that the prices are without tax so the price per meter you have to bear in mind that that's not going to be your finished cost but where I'm more on the fence with this one was that the website's really not that great, as in you go in and you find a fabric that you think, I really like that. And then when you go to order it, it then tells you that it's out of stock. And there was a lot that was out of stock on that site and it got really frustrating. I ended up buying this. There's a lot of it, there's two meters. And this is the other thing, your minimum order of any fabric has to be two meters. So I just ended up going for a basic black and white. I think this is a Lycra jersey. It's, it's got a lot of stretch, but it's actually uh, a tiny bit see-through. It is quite thin and it's not, it's not anything fantastic. So the price was okay. The postage was five pounds. It did come via DPD and it took about three days. So I, I guess, you know, that is what you're paying for. So I think the two meters of this cost me 23 pounds. So what am I planning to make with it? Let's try if I look. Where is the pattern? There you go, it is, guess what? It's another itch to sitch pattern. It's that one that I made and I showed you that in my last video, which I, I think I had it in a, a mint and a black stripe. So I think this sort of a, a boat neck top in this would be really nice. And I think if we ever go back to the office, it'd be really nice for work with a pair of black trousers. I think I'm, I might make a cami top out of it, might not. I'm not quite sure what else I will use it for. I mean, I could probably make pajamas. I'm, I don't know. I'm going to see how it comes up first in that top and then think about what else I want to make with that. So that's that one. And then last is something that I keep mentioning for ages and ages and ages. And if you look back on some of our other videos, you will see me mention it. It is this, which 
is still on my list of to do, which means it is sitting on the dining room table. And this is the Moonweight handbag. Let me just show you there. Now, this has got lots of lovely features, which means if you want to put all of those on there, you do have to buy a lot of bag notions, which can get quite expensive. I have bought those ages ago, and I've been really undecided as to what fabric I'm gonna use. So I went on to Etsy and I will put in the description where I got this fabric from because it came from the States and it, it didn't take that long to come. The postage was very reasonable and I didn't get hit with any tax or anything on it. So that was really, really good. And it is this. Can you see that? There you go. So it says Dior. And there are a few sites on there that sort of sell designery fabric and it's a, it's a sort of a lightweight canvas type fabric and then the back you can kind of see from the back here there you go now I've only ordered I think it's sold in yards I've only ordered half a yard because I'm, I'm pretty sure that's all I need for my bag and I think it'll look quite nice in this. So yes, so this came, this came last week. And I'm hoping to get this sewn up by, by my next week so I can show you my next video. Because I've been on about making that bag for like weeks and weeks, haven't I? I just, I don't know. I know other people have said that they're sort of struggling with their sojo and I really am, I'm very, very up and down. If it's something that's gonna take me a while to sort of sit and work through, I'm sort of avoiding doing it at the moment. I have still got my blue, long blue jacket that I, I was going to sew up. Again, I mentioned a video a couple, of, a couple of videos ago and I've done the pockets and I just sat there and thought, I can't, I just can't do it. I don't know if it's tension span, which is why I think I'm making things that are really, really quick and easy at the moment. I'm not sure if anyone else is struggling. I, can't, I don't really know what it is, but I'm hoping if I will just sit down and work through this bag, because I've not made a bag for quite a long time now, then it will spur me on to finishing other things. And I don't normally have lots of unfinished ob objects. I normally have lots of not started objects where I go full pelt and buy the pattern, cut the pattern out, get the fabric, put it on the dining room table, and then it just sits there staring at me until I get really, really annoyed. And then I'm just like, right, that's it, I'm making it. So, as I say, I'm hoping that by next week, I will at least have a bag made. And it's lovely to see everybody again, and I'll see you soon. Take care, bye.